Adiós. Hey guys, it's Sean, the Twisted Artisan, also known as the Traveling Trimmer. So today we're gonna do a very in-depth um, seat build on a C10 truck seat. This is a pretty flat seat here. Um, some of the changes that we're gonna make is we're gonna contour the seat by adding some foam. Now I have multiple different ways that I do this, but like I said, I'm gonna try to do an in-depth video on how um, this one's gonna play out. We're just gonna add foam instead of actually make all the foam, which we do that as well. So we're going to walk you through the process a little bit here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a nice little bump up here about with using about an inch padding. Um, and I'm going to do the side bolster on the other side as well. But the customer is actually uh, rather tall. So we're going to cut into the factory foam and drop it down about one inch. And the same with the backrest. So overall, there will be about a two inch contour there. Now, some of the other changes being just a nice basic uh, factory C10 seat. We're going to put a very, um, I'd say, wild or uh, updated pattern on it. So we're going to start with some um, black and blue perforated material. So all the little holes will have just a little bit of blue that shines through. And we're going to do a tuck and roll in the center section here um, to give it that classic look. On the sides, as far as um, the outer bolsters go, I'm actually going to retain the welt cord. So I'm going to put a, just a little strip roughly from about right here around to the back side. We're going to do a little bit of welt cording, and then I'm going to put a, a nice top stitch on that so that uh, he's looking for contrasting colors. Um, and then as you can see, as I marked out on the top, we're going to add some wings to it. And the wings will be uh, French seamed and top stitched depending on where it lays on the seat. Now, up in the top, I'm going to give it three little stripes of blue stitching just to add a little bit of pop of color towards the top of the seat. And as you can see, I actually drew on the seat with uh, chalk. And I like to do that in front of the customers. A lot of shops will do CAD designs, and, and it, that's really nice. But as far as I'm concerned, if the customer comes in and I draw down the seat and they want to change something, it's as easy as that. So once again, this is going to be a very in-depth job i'm going to show you every step of the way so you're going to want to stay tuned okay so we have the seat cover removed we're down to the foam and what i like to typically do is center the seat fortunately for me this c10 seat actually already has center lines built into the foam padding uh, i dealt i double checked it and everything did line up for center typically what i would do is measure the whole piece of foam find my center line and then i build off of that now what we're going to be doing to this seat is we're going to be cutting right here where i have these two lines marked out we're going to be dropping it down an inch typically i have a foam saw or a hacksaw blade that i use i'm going to cut it and try to have it as smooth as possible but any unfinished edges will actually clean up with a nice side grinder and then we'll go to the next step where we're going to add foam and then start doing angles <laughs> All right, so we're at the next step where I've actually cut the foam already. Um, what I did is I went a little bit deeper as I was grinding it out and I decided to go ahead and put um, quarter inch uh, foam down. And what this gave me the ability to do is put a light sand over top of that to get out any uneven spots. But I'm gonna give you a close up and you can see it's about one inch and that's how deep I wanted to go. Now the next step is gonna be to add the inch to the pieces I didn't cut and we're gonna raise it that two inches that's desired. All right, so we've now added the one inch foam. We've already cut an inch out, so that gives us a two inch rise. I actually came in about three and a quarter inches, and I'm gonna 45 degree this to give me that nice slope that I'm looking for that kind of holds you into place. And I'm just gonna use a hacksaw blade to do that. Once I get the rough cut there, I'll hit it with the side grinder and that I'll smooth everything out. Um, the other thing I wanna show you are these side corners here. Now, 
what I do is I actually make them a little long and I'll cut it from the underside, leaving about an eighth of an inch, maybe a quarter of an inch all the way around because at the same time, we're gonna take the side grinder and we'll smooth all that out so when we put the cover on, it has a nice clean transition. Now I deliberately left quite a bit here at the top and quite a bit here at the side. So when I take the side grinder, I can smooth it out and actually make it really level. I was just trying to get the bulk of the foam off. So what I have here is actually the insert, which is the perforated part. I told you we we're gonna do the tuck and roll. And what I'm gonna do is I do things a little different as far as that goes, and I can build this multiple ways as well. But the cheater way to keep this in a price point for the customer is I'm actually just gonna sew down on these pleated sections, and then I'm gonna fold the material over and actually sew the backside and bring it in about a quarter of an inch. What this does so you can allow for it is it's gonna tuck it about a half inch per pleat and it's going to shrink the material up just a little bit but it'll give me that nice tuck and roll look that i'm going for and it'll do it quick efficiently and budget friendly for the customer So now that we have all the pleats sewn up on the face, we're gonna fold each pleat over and sew from the backside. Now I'm just gonna put it a barely a foot in, which is about a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna show that to you and that's gonna give us our tuck and roll look. Let's get that step started. All right, so this is probably one of the most important parts. I wanted to give you a couple different angles. You're gonna wanna make sure you ride right along the edge of this and you can see the type of foot I have. Um, the main thing is you want to be consistent because any uh, wiggleness or, or wobbliness in the sewing right here is going to amount to uneven pleats and, and that's just not going to look good. You might as well do it the old fashioned way where you cut each strip and uh, sew it together. So this cheat only works if you stay very consistent. All right, now we've sewn everything from the backside. You can see this is a really nice clean roll and pleat look. It saved, I would say about three to four hours not cutting individual strips and sewing them together. Now this isn't for your $15,000 plus full interior jobs. This is something to be budget friendly. It's gonna hit the mark that the client wants and um, it, you can definitely reproduce this uh, quite easily. So I wanted to show this technique to you and with a little bit of movie magic, I have the rest of the inserts all ready to go and we're gonna move on to the next step. All right, on this C10 seat, we're gonna add a little bit of a welt cord to it to give it that original look, even though we're gonna modernize it a little bit. In the center of the seat, I've decided to do a double welt cord where the welt cords come together, and it's a lot simpler than most people might think. So you're gonna take your standard strip of material that you would put around your normal welt cord, and um, you're gonna sew them face to face directly in the center. Now once you do that, you'll be able to slide the welt cord, the insert part, on each side and sew it up like a regular welt cord. Now when it's all finished, this is, this is gonna be the look that we're going for and then I'll be able to add each side of the seat to this with no issue. So I've actually marked my patterns and I put my little start marks on there and I wanted to show you how I actually mark my pieces out. Now I'll start by stenciling out the shapes that I want for the wing and the outer bolster and then I'll take a piece of uh, vinyl cloth depending on what I have laying around and I'll tack glue it in place. I'll go ahead and line all this up. Here we go. And then I will flip the material back and forth and draw the line which I'm gonna do a little bit of video on that as well and try to make everything line up now once this piece is done not only would it be the outer bolster piece but I'll be able to transfer it to the inner bolster so I can just take a nice raw line I won't do any allowing on this piece but every piece I mark off of it I will make sure I have to allow 
And as you might have seen on some of the other videos, some shops actually use wax paper, which is transparent. They'll put a nice light tack glue on it. They'll use, they'll be able to look right through the material and see the Sharpie line and they'll trace it. That's a great way to go. I've actually just been doing this so long. I, I prefer this method here. And that's pretty much it now like I said I'm gonna cut it right on the line because I'm gonna use this as a main template and I'll make sure that everything I mark it to I add allowance So basically what we did is we just reproduced the procedure on doing the bottom seat. We got this backrest pretty much all done here. And now we're gonna sew all the little extra pieces together and we're gonna put this bad boy on. Almost done. Way above what I expected. Awesome. That's why I like hearing. Yes, sir. That is beautiful. You said it was going to be the wow factor. That's the way I like to do it. Wow it. factor. I love it. Man, it's even yeah, that's why I was saying that little bit of perp gives it that little bit of color, you know? 